What's going on everyone, Dark Synth here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a video on how to improve your neutral um, and your spacing in Street Fighter 6. And this can actually be applied in other fighting games too, not just Street Fighter. Um, but first, what is the neutral game? The neutral game is when you and your, your opponent are just like moving back and forth, kind of like fighting for stage positioning, um, and kind of like trying to push your opponent into the corner as well as your opponent trying to push you into the corner. So it's like a battle of tug of war. But um, that's just the gist of neutral. So the first important aspect of neutral is movement. I'm gonna use an example of boxing. If you watch any boxing match or an MMA match of any sort, <clears throat> you'll notice how both fighters are constantly moving. They're using their feet and their upper body torsos, you know, swaying and moving and uh, ducking and bobbing and weaving, you know, all that good stuff. So it's not any different in, you know, fighting games, honestly. You want to be moving so that way you can get your opponent to possibly whiff and just, you know, push them to the corner. If they constantly like to move back, you can just keep moving forward and push them into the corner. So... One thing I want to talk about movement is getting them to whiff buttons so that way you can try and get a, uh, a whiff punish within neutral game. So one tactic you can do is I see a lot of like Japanese players do this too, is they'll walk in, crouch for a second, and then walk back. And they'll just, they won't just walk in at any range, they'll walk in at the... <clears throat> They'll walk in at the range that their furthest button or whatever button that they're trying to fish for will connect. So they'll sit there for a second, not even for a full second, they'll just crouch duck and then walk back just at a range and then go to whiff punish. Um, it's really common, you'll see a lot of high level play not even just Japanese players, but high level players do this in general. Um, another thing is you can just whiff buttons specifically light buttons I wouldn't try going uh, just whiffing like medium buttons or anything because in Street Fighter 6 they have more recovery just normals in general have more recovery in this game and hurt boxes extend out further so it makes it way easier to be whiff punished in this game <laughs> so just uh, like kind of whiffing lights and getting them to maybe press a medium to try and get you to whiff punish and then you counter poke and whiff punish them. Um, that's like the basic foundation of using movement um, against your opponent. So the next part is going to be whiff punishment. I know we just talked about it in the last part but that, that was mainly about movement and kind of like using your movement to uh, you know fight for screen control and possibly get your opponent to whiff a button. In this part, I'm gonna be talking about using buttons to space yourself out on block. So as you saw, it, when I connected standing light kick at max range against Kami and she retaliated with crouching medium kick, I'm out of range. And you can find this with other moves too, like, a, okay, standing medium kick. So that wasn't tip range at the first hit, but the second hit was. That's why her crouching medium kick is out of range. So you just want to find normals that will put you out of range if they happen to block it just like at the tip range of your normal. You can also find block string sequences that will put yourself just outside of whatever normal they like to use. So then once you see them retaliate with a button you can just go for a whiff punish. Um, of course, they can read this. If you happen to just do a preemptive whiff punish, which a lot of players do, they'll go for their block string and then they'll just preemptively stick out a medium button just in case their opponent presses a button just for that whiff punish. But if your opponent reads that, they can just wait for you to whiff and then whiff punish you. So that's where mind games kind of come into play uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff. And last but not least, this is kind of just mainly generically talking about sh playing Shotos. So, for example, Ryu, he doesn't have the best normals, but he has a fireball. And the fireball with uh, Shotos like Ken, 
and Luke, they're an extension to their normals. I wouldn't think of them as just, a, you know, an ordinary projectile or a special move. I feel like it's just, a, you know, a good extension to their normals because, yes, crouching medium kick and standing medium kick are great, but look at the range and the speed that this fireball goes. So the thing you want to use, uh, like, at this range is mainly fireballs, and you don't want to be too predictable, though, because um, with Shoto's, uh, their game plan, of course, is fireball DP, and that's been their game plan since 92. Um, but just using the fireball as an extension of your normals is kind of how you want to think about using the fireball. And then there's a little, like, tactic you can do, and a lot of higher level players do, is kind of whiff jabs to, pre uh, you know, make your opponent, like, react or jump even to make it look like you're going to throw a fireball or something. But that's, like, the basics for how to play Shoto's. Uh, this applies to Ken, Ryu, Luke... Uh, just about anyone with a fireball, but uh, just the last thing about neutral is it's all about reading your opponent's movement like When they like to move back or when they like to try and move forward at you so you can try to poke them for advancing or Like when they when you approach them what they like to do like what buttons they like to press So one thing you can do is walk at them and then kind of just like block and see what buttons they want to press and then do like I talked about earlier with the movement where you just walk out. You walk in range of their normal and then walk out and then go for a whiff punish. Um, so, yeah, it's just all about reading your opponent's rhythm. Like, fighting games are literally a rhythm game. Um, you just want to figure out what buttons they like to press in neutral and when they like to press them. And just how they like to move in general. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, for the love of God... Stop jumping so much in neutral. You're getting yourself killed. Uh, but that's about it for this video. If it was at all helpful, consider leaving a like and subscribe for more helpful content like this regarding fighting games. I'll definitely be covering Mortal Kombat 1 in September once that comes out. I'm super stoked. So keep an eye out for that once September comes around. But uh, that's it. This is Darkson signing out. Complete. Hope you have a good one.